Hippity and welcome back to another Honkai Star Rail video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the simulated world 2 uh, in the simulated universe. So basically uh, my build and how I went about it. Now my units that I chose for this based on the weaknesses uh, was Hershia, uh, Serval, March and Asta. Now the build we're going to be doing is a slight combination or a couple choices from the frozen build uh, but mainly prioritizing follow-up attacks. The reason we're prioritizing follow-up attacks is because we have two follow-up attacks that can be regularly committed with our team. So as you can see there we have Hershia who's great in the fact that she will do a follow-up attack whenever an enemy's health falls below 50%. And then we also have March 7, who will do a follow-up attack whenever an enemy is struck while they have her shield active. These two conditions are going to be pretty helpful, but we're also going to be quite reliant on building into the follow-up attacks accordingly. I would start with just prioritizing follow-up attack damage. Uh, the main reason for this is that we need to increase our damage because we have to get the threshold to regularly hitting below 50%. This is so we can consistently trigger Hershey's follow-up attacks. The next things that we're going to want to focus on are obviously elation based nodes because we're going to eventually take the uh, you know, blessing that will essentially give us elation damage or damage based on elation. It's important to understand as well that in World 2 you are able to choose which paths you're going to take. So because of this I would highly prioritize uh, essentially combat in the beginning and then maybe take some of the occurrence ones later on. The reason I say taking combat early on in the beginning is because your team should be more powerful than the enemy. The enemy scales quite well with level later on and you end up taking quite a few elites on later on. So avoiding some of those elites is preferential and grabbing the easy combat upgrades now is pretty good. So. You'll see, majority of the time, I will always take anything to do with a follow-up attack. Uh, it's also advisable that if you're choosing between one stars, try and choose the follow-up attack delay option, or try and choose the follow-up attack speed option. This will enable you to consistently attack with your characters, which does tend to help. As we went along throughout, uh, the most important gold ones that we did, uh, or chose, basically are between these two first uh, gold blessings, which are basically the choice to have aftertaste damage, uh, I went with the middle one, or oh, sorry, the one on the far left, uh, because it would deal one to three stacks of aftertaste, uh, which I felt was a little bit better in terms of causing some additional DPS, which is really what I needed, because I, I needed to constantly be able to lower health and really improve the amount of damage that her shear did once the follow-up attack kicked in. Her follow-up attack was the main source of damage and you're going to see later on when a follow-up attack did trigger it basically did a huge amount of damage which was awesome. Uh, I think it's it's a really fun kind of build to do depending obviously on how you have to have the ability to get the enemy low. Now there was one place where the build kind of failed us, or well, not failed us, but it became quite challenging. Uh, there's a fight a little bit later on, and I'll point it out when we're there, where we had no weaknesses. Uh, so we weren't really able to break the characters. Now this was obviously a huge uh, problem. At this node, by the way, uh, just don't take the gamble. I took the gamble at the tavern uh, to basically uh, you know, get myself an additional blessing. Uh, but it turns out they just decided to stick me in with another fight. So, yeah, this is what it is at this point. Rather just obtain one blessing, uh, unless you want to fight both. But fighting both, again, quite challenging. And this was actually the fight that caused me the problem. I believe it was this one, or no, it was later on. Uh, I just have to double check now with the weaknesses. No, I believe this one was quite fine. Um, it was later on where we come across two enemies that don't have weaknesses. So that fight went more than fine, was you know, quite relaxed, quite swimming. 
Uh, the really nice thing is that the toad boss spawns in these self-destructing Eidolons and those are easy to get below 50% and when you trigger Hershey's uh, follow-up attack she basically just causes a huge chain reaction and you're gonna see that in the final fight. I also mix it up with a couple of hunt uh, blessings. The hunt blessings help a little bit. Uh, I specifically didn't take the ones that required us to down enemies and more just went with either the flat buffs uh, or essentially just the ones that would, you know, cause cause our base damage or base speed to kind of increase, which, you know, is obviously super duper important. So, beyond that, um, basically, that's it. Here was the uh, first of the two fights that caused us some problems. This one, we at least had the fire weakness, so this one was not so bad. But it was still a tough fight nonetheless, uh, although it did result in us getting our crucial gold uh, ability and this was that all ultimates are considered follow-up attacks, which is pretty important when you're doing a follow-up attack build. Now what it meant was is that all of our ultimates would trigger the follow-up attack passives that we'd taken so far, which obviously is quite substantially important and this rapidly changed our build because every time we did the ultimate with march or with aster this would trigger up all the benefits whether that was the speed or the enemy delay uh, and this was pretty good not to mention we got some luck on the rng uh, immediately afterwards which upgraded one of our gold abilities so we're looking pretty good at this point it's here, I believe, that I ended up, unfortunately, running into a very large stumbling block, and that was this fight over here. So, you could take a bit of a gamble here and see if you could roll out uh, on some blessings. So, you know, basically, you know, can you roll out on a blessing and you have a 30% chance to beginning. We failed immediately, which was terrible. I literally only wanted to pick up one blessing here. But we failed, like, immediately, and that sent us into a pretty tough fight. Uh, this fight, like I said, we had no uh, weaknesses whatsoever on the opposition. So this was pretty difficult, because we couldn't break them. Uh, we couldn't really do much uh, at all, really. And it was quite a big issue. Uh, we eventually had to freeze them and rely a bit on crit, but it was quite a problem, to be honest with you. So that did leave us quite drained, uh, which led to me taking the Occurrence Pathway next, uh, which fortunately was nice and relaxed. It didn't give us a, another crazy boss fight, which was quite helpful. Uh, we basically sat and chatted with a librarian who basically wrote history from what it seems, uh, and he had a quick chat with us. We discussed some ancient civilizations, and basically upon that point, we then, you know, got some random blessings. We could choose between one, two, or three stars and a certain amount. Uh, I went for the three stars, knowing that we only had one three star left to enhance, and that would be our follow-up attack one uh, with our ultimate. So it was a planned decision and resulted in us obviously getting an upgrade that I knew I wanted. So pretty good stuff. Uh, again, honestly speaking, just a good decision. And this would give us some decent strength going into the boss fight. Now, the boss fight <laughs> went by very easily. Uh, we ended up doing more than okay. Uh, really, really was quite smooth actually. So the build worked out pretty fine. A large reason towards this is because like I said, the toad boss that this area seems to feature or have basically spawns in uh, these ads. And these ads, you know, like I said, they self-destruct, but basically they tend to, like, get pretty, pretty nutty, uh, if that makes sense. So, it was a pretty simple, you know, kind of fight, uh, because of the fact that it would trigger up the follow attack for her share, there was just a ridiculous amount of damage that we could do. So, obviously, as you can see, uh, you'll notice that we hit with our ultimate you'll see this big like register of effects and that's literally because the, of all the follow-up effects occurring now as you can see here we're going to start working on their break bar i make sure i shield serval and hersher uh they were very low health because i just didn't invest as much time 
uh, into them, obviously, as one would into some of the other units. Um, because they are kind of like backup units for me right now. And, yeah, so I always make sure to shield them. But also to shield is important. You want to shield someone that's above 30% health. So they trigger the taunt passive of the shield. Yep, and you, yep, there we go. You, Lincoln, you missed it. Um, all instantly gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in instantly gone. Um, yeah, you go follow up again. Boom. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah, she she does some pretty nutso damage, um, which is obviously great. I think yeah, it's super fun uh, to see. Like once all the effects trigger, she just kind of goes sicko mode and gets really really nutty with it, which I think is awesome. Uh, and yeah, just it's it's a lot of fun basically to be able to do so and because we're hitting the follow-up attacks we regenerate skill points so using an ultimate is actually a very good play you can see there follow-up attack huge chunk of damage and again he spawns in these little self-destructing homies and this is where her shield shines I mean, again look at that follow-up damage from march nuts those are follow-up base attacks like those aren't even her yeah it's just everything and here we go, uh, we're gonna trigger everything, boom, there goes Hershey, boom, there goes the explosions, and yeah, 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 you can see everything's just kind of going nutty, um, which is awesome, again, I think it's a really fun build to do uh, with, you know, like, all these units, obviously the initial follow-up is the big thing, but like I said, as long as you choose someone that's got above 30% health, you can trigger marches, follow up, and she does some pretty good single target damage as well, once all of this is kicked off. We've got the delayed ability, we've got the speed up, we've got everything from these, and it's just, yeah, pretty big stuff. And the team just was really cool. It was a lot of fun to run, and we got it done. But that's it for me. Um, I'd love to see what builds you guys ran. Uh, I hope you can enjoy it. And yeah, um, yeah, see you guys in the next one. But until then, take care, stay safe, and uh, of course, bye. And hey, now we got Hirsch's uh, idol on, which is sick. So yeah, but that's going to be it for me. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.